Hi everyone. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a holiday scarf. You may have noticed that I'm wearing a sling. I recently broke my shoulder and because YouTube is forever, this is um, Christmas 2017. So if you're seeing it later, know that I have recovered by now, I'm sure. Um, so this whole video I'm filming with only use of my right hand. Um, very limited use of my left hand. It's uh, been a, uh, a very interesting experience, but I'm healing up nicely. And we did try to do a live filming, which uh, you can watch in our, our live section of our YouTube channel if you'd like to see what I would consider more of a blooper reel than a educational video. I just couldn't leave you guys hanging with not being able to actually complete the scarf. So today I filmed using my cell phone, which went remarkably well. So I hope you enjoy learning how to make this holiday scarf. The foot that we're using for this is the sequins and ribbon foot, and it comes with a quarter inch opening in the front of the presser foot. And this is a guide that you can remove by turning the nut until it comes off. And then you replace it with one of the other guides that has different size openings. Each of the creative feet do fit all sewing machines because we give you adapters that attach onto the presser foot. But first try to just snap the foot onto your sewing machine. However your sewing machine attaches the foot. And you can see how it just attached right on there. And what I'm going to be showing you in this lesson is couching with yarn and sewing fabrics together using the uh, yarn to, to attach the or to sew the seam together. This is eyelash yarn and it's, it's quite interesting to use and very soft so it makes for a really nice embellishment on a scarf. Take and lay your yarn over the thread itself and then you grab the two ends of the thread once you have the two ends of the threads lined up, you can insert them into the hole. And then you just pull those thread that thread through the hole and the yarn feeds right in. And you can see that the trim is actually locked in place, so that eliminates you having to hold onto the trim to guide it underneath the sewing machine needle. Go ahead and and attach the foot after the yarn is insert in it, inserted into the guide. If you're not familiar with the term couching, it is the act of sewing something down on fabric. And you can see here I used colorful threads and different types of yarns to adorn this little zipper pouch that uh, you can make as well using this foot. And here my sister Kathy used the yarn for applique around this cute little vest for children. You can see, imagine how much faster it is to applique when you're sewing a yarn down along the edge rather than using a satin stitch. Not that satin stitch applique is not a good idea because our satin edge foot does that beautifully as well. This foot not only sews yarn but it sews sequins and rickrack and decorative cordings. You can see you can use double needle, triple needle to do that. And this do not take happened be, uh, is on here because one time somebody took this sample from us at a show. Uh, this is a soutache braid, which is usually very difficult to stitch and super easy with the sequin ribbon foot. It just holds it right in place and you can, you can just quickly just zoom that, th that stitch right down. You can also finish the edge of your materials using yarn in, as a, a different style of binding to finish the edge of your materials. Now, because my hand is injured or my arm, my shoulder is injured, and I have really struggled to use my left hand, um, and also because I just really love using it, this is our, our liquid-based uh, water-soluble stabilizer in a bottle. It's actually wet water-soluble stabilizer. It has a skinny tip on, on one end, and on the other, it has this broad tip. You can use this for inserting zippers and piping and for sewing seam allowances. And you put it on your finger and rub your fingers together. It just falls right off of you and you're just left a little bit softer. 
So what I'm going to use it for, and uh, what you see here are three pieces of, or three strips from a jelly roll. If you're not familiar with it, what a jelly roll is, is um, companies create these uh, rolls of material with cor corresponding or um, complementary colors with proper tones and hues to make it so you could make an entire project from that. And know all of these pieces together will make a beautiful project. So for the scarf, I selected three complementary colors of material that are Christmassy, and you want to have your right sides of your material facing up on all of them when you begin. And what we're doing is just drawing a line of the water-soluble stabilizer along the edge of the material, and you don't have to do very much at a time. And then take your fingertip and very lightly just slide your finger across. And all that really does is, is it disperses the water. It makes it dry faster because it's an evaporation process that takes place. And then you overlap one quarter of an inch or even less. You could do even an eighth of an inch overlap. And you just lay one fabric over the other and then slide your fingers just as lightly as before across the material. This now has pinned the material 100% all the way along there. And you can see that the glue did not go through to the back side. Remember, this is not really a glue. It's just water-soluble stabilizer. You would do the same thing on the next piece. And um, you could have them overlap correspondingly. So in other words, instead of having this one overlap here, I'm going to continue to have each one overlap the same on the same side. So we'll go ahead and do this side. And then slide your finger across again. And lift up and place your fabric down. And once again, gently, very light touch on the material. Also, just so you know, when you open this pack, this, this bottle, you don't need to cut anything off. This is just a, a ready to use, open the bottle, and it should automatically come out. You don't have to worry about it ever hardening inside the bottle because it's not an adhesive. It's actually just as I said before, water-soluble stabilizer in a bottle. Now, because jelly rolls are only so long in their length, you would use two sets of corresponding fabrics. And then when you join, you would join the two ends together, and this will be where the neck of the scarf is hidden by your hair. And um, we'll go ahead and we'll be sewing the yarn across to join the two ends together. So I've already got a piece ready, and I'm going to go ahead and start showing you how we sew them together. So here's a better um, example of what I was just referring to. These are the same materials, two sets of strips glued together first, and then you glue across to join them together. And I'm going to go ahead and stitch yarn across here. And I'll probably periodically do that and repeat along the, the scarf so that you'll never know that these fabrics were joined together along the neckline. Before I begin, I, I fold my fabric in an accordion fold, which is pretty much just um, taking it and going like this. It just kind of overlaps like that. And then when you go to sew, this will unravel very easily as it goes through the machine without any tension on the material, making it not pucker as much. The stitch that I'm going to use is this one here. It's called the couching stitch. But you could use any type of a stitch that does more than one stitch per zigzag, like stitch, stitch, stitch. Uh, for instance, the, the three-step zigzag trico stitch or serpentine on the Bernina sewing machine. So any stitch that does more than one stitch across and in a zigzag format will work beautifully for this. Now we want to make sure that the needle is going to hit the yarn using the stitch. So you do that by checking to see if the stitch is going to line up over the yarn. And if not, then you turn the nut, which moves the yarn over to the sewing machine needle position. Because on a zigzag stitch, you can't kind of take your zigzag stitch and pick it up and move it over. This, in essence, does that for you. Once you know that you're lined up properly, 
then you really don't have to watch the sewing machine needle at all. And we were trying, what we're trying to do is maintain our stitch so that it covers the raw edge of the materials where they overlap. And you can see that I don't really have to um, worry too much about the position of the yarn. I don't need to put the yarn down in front, nor should you. So you want to make sure that you're not actually holding on to the yarn as it sews. You, um, in a, instead of holding your hands down on the material, put your fingers like underneath to help cradle the material so that it doesn't get caught on anything. And then you just start sewing. Because we're using the feed dogs on the machine, there's a consistent stitch length occurring on there and that ends up beautiful as you can see the row that I did previously. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a lot of this stitching that you see here. So now I'm doing the back side. You can see that the yarn is on the front side already and now even though there's bulk under there, the foot glides right over the top. At each ending and beginning, I lift the foot up and kind of pull back a little bit, do a few stitches, lift up the foot, pull back a little bit, do a few stitches. And that's a good securing of the end so you don't have to worry about the yarn shredding on you later on. Now to go across where the shoulder seam or where it'll rest on the neck. And once again, starting at the end, lift and go back a little bit and pull to secure that ending. Come up on the end here and stop, lift, pull back on the yarn. Again, you can do it up to three times. And now we're ready to finish the outer edge of the scarf. And I am going to do both top and bottom to give it a real nice full edge on there. And since I'm right here and we're going to go all the way around the entire perimeter of the scarf. There's no reason to tie a knot and stop and start all over. Instead, you can just start from where you are by just raising the foot and turning the material and stitching. I stopped so that I could fold my fabric again because it had uh, because I just turned that corner and I hadn't actually folded the fabric in the front of the machine again. And now you'll see I'm using two hands. I am stabilizing or guiding the material in front, but not the yarn, and just kind of assisting from behind, just in case I lean on the material or accidentally lean on the yarn because it's important to not, not hold back on those items as you sew. When you reach the corner, you're gonna do the same thing as before, lift and pull back a couple times, and then you can just lift and turn and continue. And then once again, go back. So we want to kind of really secure those corners. And then continue all the way around. Now I've come back around to where I started on the top of the scarf. And instead of stopping and tying a knot, I'm going to just raise the foot and flip the scarf. And once again, remember before you continue to fold this fabric up in the accordion fold again so that it doesn't get stuck as you go around. And now go ahead and sew all the way around the back side, outside edge of the scarf again with the eyelash yarn. Now I've reached the point where I'm coming back over the place where I started, so I'm going to lift and go back, lift and go back, and that should be enough to secure it. Mm -hmm. 
Then you just pull out, and instead of cutting in front of the foot, you cut near the material. And I've got one more stitch to do, and that's across the neck on the opposite side or the reverse side of the scarf. Now to prepare for the ends, I've, I've taken and I'm wrapping the yarn around this box of thread that we offer. And I've gone around about three times. So then I'm going to go ahead and get ready for the next step of making a really nice, cute end for both ends of the scarf to make it more knitted like. I'm sliding a chopstick in underneath there and I'm going to go ahead and start sliding the yarn off of the box and onto the chopstick. You could have, you could use a cardboard. It would have worked better than, than me using such a firm box because if you used a cardboard then you could squish it and take it off. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull out the chopstick out of there and do a long running stitch along the edge of the yarn. Using just a straight stitch. Going forward and, and now reversing to uh, get a good stitch on, formed on there. You can lift the foot as needed as you go across. And I pretty much didn't use a long stitch length. The length is 2.5. We're just wanting to get these joined together on one end. Hopping as needed. Almost to the end. And reverse. Now we have this nice fluffy end to stitch onto the scarf. I'm going to do so in a unique way. I'll be right back. For this next part, I'm switching from my sequins and ribbon foot to my pearls and piping foot. And on this foot, there is this little washer that you can slide left and right to help you position your trim beneath your sewing machine needle. I'm going to use a regular zigzag stitch and, and swing about a six millimeter wide swing. And I have a different type of yarn than was used than the eyelash. There's a more tight yarn and I have about 10 strands double the length or the width of the scarf so I'm going to be having two I'll end up making two of these one for both ends and you just take and slide this underneath the tunnel on my pearls and piping foot so now that I have all the trims or all the yarns underneath You gather the threads or the yarns together in front of the foot and then you gently pull from behind. So you're acting as the feed dogs and creating a really nice soft trim to uh, attach to the eyelash yarn ends that we created. Now we take and place the fuzzy yarn onto underneath the foot and take the braid and put it on and we're going to create or attach that yarn onto that and I'm using a zigzag stitch it looks wild and crazy but it ends up beautiful on the edge of the scarf Keep your eye out for threads getting stuck in the areas that they shouldn't be, or the uh, yarn, I mean. And just kind of pull them out. 
and continue keeping your eye focused on the yarn here because what we're trying to do is keep that cording that we created right along the edge of it. And we're going to bring them together like this with this cording right along the edge of the scarf. Go ahead and use a straight stitch. So forward, back, and the needle is resting right along the side of the cording. The foot guides for you. And so you can keep your eye focused on making sure none of the threads prevent the foot from feeding or those yarns. And I'm gonna go ahead and use about a three millimeter stitch length. Adding this yarn element makes it feel more like a scarf. Go all the way to the end and forward and, and go back and forth. Isn't that a pretty finish on the end of the scarf? Now because we used the eyelash yarn and the stitch that we used wasn't uh, a zigzag but more of a three-step zigzag, you can actually start pulling on your eyelash yarn and it will start to make a fuzzy edge and on both sides covered with no seam allowances and there you have it a beautiful holiday scarf you could however use any material as I'm sure you figured out by now know that your yarn is now a trim that you can enjoy using for sewing construction as well as embellishment and um, what a wonderful gift to yourself or somebody else. It's very fast. Uh, in case I didn't mention it, it's always better to use a material that looks similar, or almost identical on both sides so that nobody can really tell the front from the back of your scarf. I hope that you enjoyed learning how to make this. And from my family to yours, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah, Mele Kalikimaka, and everything else. Feliz Navidad.